So please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you again. Um, for everyone that's joining us tonight, before we, remove, we move through the agenda, I will mention and remind everyone about our rules of decorum, which are in place to ensure the, meeting, ensure the meetings move along well and to help everyone feel comfortable sharing their comments. A copy of the full rules are available at the door, and our staff will post them in the Zoom link. But basically, we want to make sure that this is an open forum for anybody to speak um, and to feel comfortable speaking. So uh, one of the rules is no, no shouting or clapping um, so that opposing viewpoints feel comfortable. Um, and then, of course, no profanity or things of that nature. Um, item A, the next item is um, A4, which is the approval of the meeting minutes from November 14th, 2023, December 8th, 2023, and the formal meeting minutes of December 5th, 2023. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion from Councilmember Pui, second from Councilmember Dugan. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed say nay. That motion passes unanimously. Um, <laughs> this will bring us to our council public hearings. Uh, if you would like to comment on a public hearing today, we are accepting those both in person and online on Zoom. If you need to speak with our staff member, please select Achintia Mahajan from the list of participants. If you need, uh, you can also raise your hand in the Zoom window to indicate that you need something from the host. Taylor Hill, another staff member, will be calling the names of those who wish to comment based on the order the names were received. If you are on Zoom, please unmute, unmute your mic when Taylor calls your name. The only public hearing that we have today is a public hearing related to an ordinance for landscape buffers, uh, landscaping and buffers, and then there is a general comment period later on in the agenda. But before we take public comments, I will invite um, Jennifer Bruno, the council's deputy director, to give us a brief introduction to this item. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the proposed amendments rewrite and we reorganize the landscaping and buffers chapter of the city code, consistent with previous council discussions related to various sustainability goals for Salt Lake City, and consistent with the strategies outlined in the city's urban forest action plan. The changes also include the feedback and input from several city departments. At the last work session, the council discussed several adjustments to the proposal, and planning is working on incorporating those into a revised ordinance that will be discussed at a future work session agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. <clears throat> Taylor, if you'll please start with our first public comment related to the landscaping and buffers amendments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are four people registered for this item. The first will be Stanley Holmes, followed by Jen Colby, and then Dulce Horn. Stanley's here in person. Is that microphone? Is this on? Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so my name is Stan Holmes. I live in District 3. Given the climate change-driven drought that we experienced for 20-plus years, I appreciate the city's having taken leadership, uh, leadership role in its commitment to achieve 100% renewable energy by 2030. I wish you would now take a leadership role towards setting a water conservation goal and model for Salt Lake County. Unfortunately, the proposed landscape buffers ordinance is not yet worthy of the city's conservation toolbox. Nor is the urban forest action plan. I urge you to send both back to city planning for a deeper dive into what's really needed and how to get there. Meanwhile, please accept staff's recommendation that the ordinance not be retroactive retroactively applied to the many hundreds of residents who've taken personal responsibility for initiating water conservation measures by xeriscaping their lawns and park strips, or yards and park strips. I find troubling that the ordinance, pre uh, the ordinance purpose statement would change, where the existing ordinance seeks to, quote, promote the prudent use of water, end quote. The proposed revision would delete that objective. Prudent use of water, gone. 
The new lead objective would be to increase the urban tree canopy. Park strip trees would be required. How much more water would we use over the next 20 years given the new tree requirements? while water wastage on turf lawns continues. Similarly, the Urban Forest Action Plan fails to take a holistic view, leaving too many gaps. Why, for example, does that plan not address arbor medians for the west side's 70-foot wide, unshaded, paved street heat islands? There's more in my full comment, which I've submitted to you all, and I thank you very much for the time. Next will be Jen Colby, followed by Dulce Horn, and then Cindy Cromer. Jen, you may now unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Jen Colby, District 4. I'm a longtime urban gardener and sustainability advocate. My recent graduate programs in public administration and sustainability at the University of Utah included a green infrastructure course. So I've been very concerned about the relative lack of good green infrastructure in Salt Lake City as compared to progress being made in many places. Cities are urban ecologies for many species besides we self-centered humans. Habitat for them needs to be taken into account. Instead, in the past few years, I've been increasingly concerned about poor landscape choices being made by well-meaning neighbors and property owners in the name of water conservation. There are already far too much barren rockscape, zero scaping being installed. This increases the heat island effect. The gravel and rocks often wash onto sidewalks, bike lanes, and streets and create hazards. Beautiful, diverse, water-wise, zero scaping is what is needed. I hope this ordinance will set a higher bar towards that goal. Healthy water retaining soils are, require good root structures and vegetation cover, not just plastic, landscape, fabric, and rock. Regarding the proposed ordinance, a few suggestions. Retain the ban on artificial turf. This material not only contains dangerous chemicals that can contaminate soil and water, it also superheats and kills the soil and contributes to the urban heat island effect. Remove the allowance for tree canopies to count as landscaping cover. These are different issues. Rather than helping the urban canopy, it may encourage people to just remove all ground vegetation and stop watering trees. This is the opposite of what we need. Shade tolerant water wise, water -wise plants are readily available. Do permit curb cuts and other stormwater retention treatments like V-boxes. Also, the 50 space parking lot by a retention requirement seems arbitrary and should be reduced. Green roof should be encouraged and please also set a good example on city properties. The golf courses in particular remain a huge water user. Low water turf grasses are available. While turf has its place in parks, it needs to be significantly reduced. I'll send more comments in writing. Thank you. And next will be Dulce Horn followed by Cindy Cromer. Dulce, you may now unmute. Hello, my name is Dulce Horn Shi Eya, and I live on Capitol Hill in District 3. Myself and my family have long been concerned about the climate crisis and we have and how we can reduce our impact. I believe that human-caused climate change is real and is a leading cause of natural disasters worldwide. In this region specifically, increasing heat, wildfires, and lengthening droughts harm the Great Salt Lake. Recognizing we are a key part of the problem led us to make concrete life changes. We cut our fossil fuel consumption. In the summer of 2016, my family hired a landscape contractor to xeriscape our property and park strip to reduce water consumption. We obtained a city building permit for the project. As a result, we now save thousands of gallons of water each year. In 2020, we received our first citation from the civil enforcement, as did our neighbor, who had followed our water conservation lead. According to the citations, we violated City Ordinance 21A.48, and the city threatened us with a $25 per day fine if we did not comply. The city personally harassed me, a petite woman of color, when a male city employee parked his car directly in front of my driveway and started taking photos of my property without my consent. He only left when I confronted him, possibly endangering my safety. Nearly four, four years after the first citation, my neighbor and I have continued to refuse to comply with the citation. We should not be punished for making valiant attempts to slow the effects of the climate crisis. We should not be punished for saving water as the Great Salt Lake shrinks and fire seasons lengthen. Thank you. And next will be Cindy Kermer. Cindy, you may now unmute. Hi, everybody. I checked out due to the weather. Thank you for taking remote comments. 
I appreciated the additional discussion of artificial turf by the Planning Commission, which resulted in a negative recommendation to you. And Public Utilities confirmed that negative recommendation at your work session last month. For all the reasons outlined in your work session and by Jen Colby's remarks, I urge you to do two things. Do not allow artificial turf on city-owned property, including park strips. And the second, include information on the negative aspects of artificial turf in your communications with your constituents, especially as the weather warms. The city must continue to promote water conservation. Artificial turf sets emerald green as the year-round gold standard. Nothing could be more backwards. That's a message which will in the long term be incompatible with the health of the Great Salt Lake and the people who want to live near it. Thank you very much. That was the final registered commenter for this item. Mr. Chair. Yeah, Councilor Pui. I move that the council close the public hearing and defer action to a future meeting. Second. I have a motion from Councilor Pui and a second from Councilor Young. Is there any discussion to this item, this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That motion passes. <clears throat> we do not have any potential action items, so that takes us to section D of our um, agenda, which is comments. The first is uh, questions to the mayor from the city council. Madam Mayor, thank you for being here with us tonight. Council members, any questions for the mayor, her administration? Thank you. Um, item number two is comments to the city council. This is the general comment portion of our agenda where members of the public can speak to um, us about anything that uh, they will, that they would like. Um, as a reminder for those joining in Zoom, Achintia Mahajun uh, from our staff will moderate our Zoom and message you with any questions about your registration. Um, Taylor Hill will be calling the names of those who wish to comment and um, based on the order of registration or comment cards received. At the two minute mark, the host will announce time and your microphone will be muted. If you're unable to finish your comments, please send the rest via email, mail, or by calling our office. Um, Taylor, please uh, begin with our first comment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are about 37 people registered to speak. Um, the first will be N Canada, followed by Robert Moyer, and then Liz DeFriz. And you may now unmute. Hi there. This is N Canada. I live in District 5. Um, I've been watching City Council for a long time. I've called in a number of times. And, um, you know, I watch you guys every Tuesday. And the silence has been deafening for me on the current genocide in Palestine as a local Palestinian American myself among a host of other identities, um, which I share with a lot of people in the council. I'm disappointed at the lack of bravery, moral courage. I, you know, the polling says that 80% of Democrats, I think it's 59% of uh, Republicans and 57 or maybe it's the reverse, 57% of Republicans, 59% of independents want a ceasefire. Uh, the, con the, the genocide ongoing in Palestine where over 22,000 people have died, many of which children, almost all of which are innocent, um, has, has shaken my faith in democracy. There's a graph going around where most people want this ceasefire from their representatives. They want them to call for a ceasefire and nobody is. I hope that you guys show on a local level that democracy is alive and that you believe in representational democracy and not trustee representation, that you are our voice and not the other way around. So I hope the comments tonight move you to courage um, because we're not going anywhere. Thank you. And next will be Robert Moyer, followed by Liz DeFriz, and then Ambreen Khan. Robert, you may now unmute. Hello, Council. My name is Bobby Moyer. I'm a Salt Lake City resident in District 7 and in one of your constituents. 
I'm here today calling on you all as a representative to bring forward a resolution demanding an immediate and permanent ceasefire to end Israel's indiscriminate attacks on Gaza, along with the rest of occupied Palestine. You must, in good conscience, stand in solidarity with the Palestinian people and demand Israel stop its free of killing and arbitrarily imprisoning thousands of innocent civilians and posting punitive, crippling restrictions on Palestinian people's access to food, water, and electricity, destroying countless homes, hospitals, schools, and other critical infrastructure, and enabling illegal settlers' attacks around occupied Palestine. Hundreds of experts around the world, from scholars to international lawyers, at the UN and human rights organizations and beyond have made it clear that Israel's actions in Gaza constitute genocide. At least 23,210 people, nearly the population of the city of South Salt Lake, including more than 9,600 children, have been killed. The UN warned on January 1st that half the population of Gaza, over 1 million people, are at risk of starvation. Over 2 million people, approximately the population of the entire Washat Front, have been forcibly and illegally displaced from their homes. Can you fathom an atrocity of such scale here in Utah? It is unconscionable in this moment of such severe human suffering to remain silent as this council has been for over 90 days of Israeli onslaught against the Palestinian people. It's long past time for Salt Lake City to join the likes of Detroit, Akron, Wilmington, Providence, Oakland, San Francisco, and Portland, Maine in passing a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire along with the unconditional release of all hostages and free flow of humanitarian aid access to Gaza. This is an opportunity for you all to stand up on our behalf and say we will not be complicit in Israel's genocide of the Palestinian people. Thank you for your time. And next will be Liz DeFriz, followed by Ambreen Khan, and then Riley Marin. Liz, you may now unmute. Hello, my name is Liz DeFries, and I am also calling in to urge the City Council to draft and pass a resolution to demand an end to the genocide in Gaza. The people of this city and all around the country have been flooding the streets and engaging in constant political action to make it clear that we stand in solidarity with the people of Palestine. We do not want our so-called representatives at any level of government to continue to be passive to passively or actively allow our tax dollars to be used to support the genocidal apartheid regime of Israel as it uses this funding and political support to terrorize and murder Palestinians. There are already dozens of anti-genocide resolutions that have been passed in support of the Palestinian people in cities across the United States. And the fact that this body has not already enacted a resolution in support of Palestinian human rights is an embarrassment for our Salt Lake community. We should remember that Salt Lake City was founded on the murder and displacement of indigenous peoples, just like Israel was founded on the murder and displacement of Palestinians for the past 75 years. And because of this shared history of settler colonial genocide, it is imperative that Salt Lake City send a strong message that we absolutely condemn genocide and the imperialist profit-based system that is fueling it with our tax dollars right now. This council should immediately enact a resolution that calls for number one, an immediate and permanent end to the illegal occupation, apartheid, and genocide of Palestinians by the Zionist Israeli state. Number two, that Israel free all Palestinian political prisoners right now. And number three, that all Utah and US funding and economic ties that support the genocidal state of Israel be cut immediately. Passing this resolution is simply about protecting basic human rights and should be enacted with the utmost urgency by this council. This council should then use your influence and power as elected representatives to support the movement for a, pre for a free Palestine in any space that you have influence. We will not allow Salt Lake City to resume business as usual while our tax dollars and our elected representatives are supporting a genocide in Palestine. We will keep organizing and fighting until Palestine is free and any U.S. imperialist political forces that benefit from these genocidal actions are out of power for good. Thank you very much. Next will be Ambreen Khan, followed by Riley Marin, and then Stuart Robinson. Ambreen, you may now unmute. Hi, my name is Ambreen. I live in District 2, and I'm a genetic counselor with Intermountain Healthcare. I urge the mayor and the city council's rep, just like everyone else said today, to pass a resolution supporting a ceasefire in Gaza um, and to recognize that all life is precious and lives continue to be at imminent risk of death if a ceasefire is not achieved without delay. I also urge the representatives to urge the president of the United States and the congressional members who represent us to demand an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. We can have an end to violence in Gaza without a threat to our rights here in Salt Lake City. A nurse in Gaza said, if we're not destined to continue living, then memorize our actions, our names, and our pictures, and write on our graves in bold script. Here lie those who loved life 
and could not find a way to live it. When a person in the United States comes to a hospital and is bleeding to death, oftentimes medical staff keeps them alive by whatever means necessary, long enough for them to say goodbye to their family. We live in a country where healthcare providers like myself go through extraordinary measures to save lives. Meanwhile, people in Gaza, including healthcare providers, are screaming from under the rubble, and they don't even have the ability to hold hands with a loved one as they say their last goodbye. We have dehumanized the people of Palestine, and there are about 270 healthcare workers who have been killed and hundreds abducted by the Israeli occupation forces. So it's imperative that you as our city council representative and our mayor demand an immediate ceasefire by urging not only the congressional members, but also to pass a resolution that supports that ceasefire and represents the people who have voted you to represent us. Thank you. Next will be Riley Marin, followed by Stuart Robinson, and then Irmira Ferdian. Riley, you may now unmute. Hello, my name is Riley Marone. I am a Latina woman living here in Salt Lake City. And along with my other uh, fellow members of the city here, I call for a ceasefire um, and the ongoing war go crime that Israel is um, doing, funded by our tax dollars. Um, you are our voice, and as you can see, there are many of us that have spoken and that will continue to speak and we will not stop speaking about the resolution that needs to happen and the ceasefire that needs to happen. Um, we must end aid to Israel. Israel is only escalating their tensions and I can only speak for myself when I say that I can only see so many kids killed on my screen so many times a day um, where it's impacting my health. It's impacting whether or not I know like how the United States and how our city feels about this ongoing war crime, not only against children, but brown children. And it's hard to not look back and wonder what we would have done in previous war crimes when we are in we are constantly contributing to one now with our tax dollars so i along with the others ask that you please call for a ceasefire and demand a ceasefire to not only our local representatives but also the president thank you next will be stuart robinson followed by amira fandian and then jen colby stuart you may now unmute hello <clears throat> My name is Stuart Robinson, and I am a resident of Salt Lake, and I am here to urge you all to, just as my fellow community members are, to call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Over 22,000 Palestinians have been murdered, many of whom are children. And mind you, that is only the official number. There are thousands of others missing and still buried under rubble. Experts have estimated the death toll may already be more than double that official number. Israel is restricting food access, food and water, and humanitarian aid into Gaza. This is a humanitarian crisis, and if this is allowed to continue unmitigated, hundreds of thousands more will die, and the blood will be on our hands in America who are supporting all of this aid to Israel and all of these weapons. There's an enormous amount of real estate and weapons development in Utah that goes directly to support Israel. And I myself, being a person who has lived in Utah for the majority of their life, am disgusted that I am living with these facilities, bringing about weapons of death into creation in my backyard and my neighborhoods. It is abhorrent that we are allowing this con to continue and it is our responsibility as people of the world, especially people who have contributed to this crisis, to call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire in Gaza. Please find your humanity and speak up on this issue. Thank you. Next will be Irmira Fandian, followed by Jen Colby and then Hannah Corkett. Irmira is here in person. 
Hello to the Salt Lake City Council and everyone in attendance today. My name is Ermia Fanayan, and I am a longtime trans liberation activist and organizer with Armed Queers Salt Lake City. Today, I wanted to read off the numbers of the deaths, injuries, and mass displacement in Palestine that demonstrate the severity of the genocide currently taking place. However, these realities are no secret in which I have to tell you about today. The past few months, the world has witnessed through only our phone screens and with no help of the media or those in power, what the Palestinian people have had to grapple with for the past 70 plus years. Every time we scroll, we are seeing the terror occur in the most barbaric forms against the Palestinian people. But make no mistake, the people right here in Salt Lake City, the city in which you've been elected to serve, stand in solidarity with Palestine and indeed have been organizing, speaking out and fighting for the freedom of Palestinian people. The queer and trans people of Salt Lake City, the Pacifica community of Salt Lake City, the students of Salt Lake City, the teachers, barbers, restaurant owners, baristas, bus drivers, and nearly every other facet of the people which reside in the city have come out in support of a free Palestine. And it's time for the actual city to do the same by introducing a resolution to call for a ceasefire in Palestine and to stop the genocide. Thank you. Next will be Jen Colby, followed by Hannah Corkett, and then Molly Cheen. Jen, you may now unmute. Good evening again, Jen Colby, District 4. Very sympathetic to all the previous comments, but my topic is different. As you move into the next budget cycle, I encourage you to improve transit access and ridership by focusing on local bus service. Specifically, please, ex please expand the free fare zone on, for local buses only to the boundaries of Salt Lake City. Light and heavy rail, the streetcar and express buses are a premium product and can remain an add-on for residents through the Hive Pass or local employee provided employer provided passes. This would accomplish several several things. First, transportation costs are the second highest household budget item behind housing, yet housing affordability seems to be the primary focus of decision makers. Salt Lake City remains car dependent by design, even though the city itself has a high degree of control over this through street design as well as partnerships and contracts with UTA. Yes, UDOT is a major problem, but that's a separate issue. Our lower income residents tend to be more reliant on local bus service. This is therefore also a social and economic justice issue. Transit ridership in general, but especially on buses, has not recovered from the pandemic. Every day I see buses driving around fairly empty while our streets are clogged with the cholesterol of private vehicle traffic. Removing fare payment and boarding also increases efficiency. It reduces potential conflict, which recent reports say has contributed to assaults on drivers. Also, bus drivers can call for help as needed if there, there are disruptive passengers on board as compared to the situation on tracks. Finally, we are facing escalating environmental crises, including the climate emergency and poor air quality, yet I see little action or urgency among elected leaders to meet the speed and scale of these challenges, especially regarding transportation choices and lack of choices. A few free fair days is woefully inadequate. Car dependency by design contributes substantially to these issues, and you have a lot of power to change this. Private car ownership and use has been highly subsidized for nearly a century directly and indirectly. It's long past time to better level the playing field. Please make local buses free fare in Salt Lake City. Thank you. Next will be Hannah Corkut, followed by Molly Cheen and then Ethan Maron. Hannah, you may now unmute. Hi, my name is Hannah Korkut. I'm a daughter of refugees who were ethnically cleansed from Bosnia during the 1990s war. I'm also a registered nurse. Both of these identities have caused me to watch this genocide of Palestinians in both Gaza and the West Bank with close detail. I'm watching closely to see how our elected officials in Utah respond to these crimes against humanity. I'm ashamed to say that it has either total silence or calls to stand with Israel. It's absolutely shameful and disgusting. Five days ago, the Euromed Human Rights Monitor posted the following statistics. 30,676 people have been killed and assumed dead under the rubble, with 12,040 of them being children. 58,960 people have been injured. 
241 killed, and 283 injured healthcare professionals. 169 healthcare facilities, including 23 hospitals, 57 clinics, and 89 ambulances have been targeted. We are watching a genocide happen on our phone screens for the world to see. We are watching videos of people getting pulled out of the rubble with limbs missing and severe injuries and burns. We are watching surgeons perform life-saving surgeries without anesthesia or medication. We are watching injured people lie on dirty floors covered in blood as they are receiving IV fluids or blood as someone holds the bag above them. We are watching maternity floors and cancer hospitals bombed, leaving vulnerable mothers and cancer patients without a place to receive care or shelter. We are watching healthcare professionals hold a press conference with martyrs surrounding them. I can keep going with the atrocities that Israel is committing because there's so much more. Palestine should be at the forefront of all conversations in offices, in offices such as the city council and in higher branches. If you do not listen to our demands, we will be sure to do everything in our power to get you out of office. We call for a permanent ceasefire, the end on the siege of Gaza, and a free Palestine from the river to the sea. Thank you. Next will be Molly Chin, followed by Ethan Marin, and then Aaron Lin. Molly, you may now unmute. Hello, my name is Molly Chen. I live in District 3. I am speaking today to urge the City Council to bring forward a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in occupied Palestine and an end to aid and funding to Israel. As of today, 94 days since the start of this genocide, 23,000 Palestinians have been murdered by the Israeli occupation forces, according to the official death toll in Gaza. Al Jazeera reports that every hour, six children are killed. In total, 1.7 million Palestinians are displaced, living in refugee camps. Yet these numbers cannot represent the human toll of this ongoing genocide. As every martyr who was killed was someone's mother, father, son, daughter, or grandparent, any lives that were lost today would have been saved by yesterday's ceasefire. The Israeli state is con conducting indiscriminate attacks against civilians, dropping white phosphorus bombs, bombing hospitals, and killing journalists, which according to Amnesty International constitute war crimes. South Africa has charged Israel with genocide in the International Court of Justice. The elected leaders of Salt Lake City must take a stand against genocide. As elected officials in Salt Lake, you serve as a voice and representative of your constituents. You also hold political power and authority. The impact of this resolution would join the local, national, and international pressure for a ceasefire in Palestine. To conclude, I urge the City Council to support a resolution calling for the immediate and permanent ceasefire and an end to aid to Israel. Next will be Ethan Marin, followed by Aaron Lynn, and then Alessandra Reed. Ethan, you may now unmute. Hello, City Council. My name is Ethan Marion, and I live in District 5. I am also joining the call that I would like the City Council to make a stand and make a resolution against genocide. Uh, as you have already heard, there are thousands of people and children who have already been killed. And if no action is taken, then hundreds of thousands of more lives can be lost and millions of people will be negatively impacted. The fact that we do have an ability to do something against this and that we can work on ending all USAID to Israel is something that we need to be taking immediate steps towards and that the city council can do. I want to emphasize that, again, this is an important time in our history, and it is a time where we should not be standing by idly just thinking that this does not impact us since we are directly funding and spending our tax dollars towards Israel and towards an endless bombing of innocent people who are being collectively punished. That is something that we need to address and that lands on you as our representatives to take that step. As others have mentioned, there have been numerous other calls and resolutions for action and Salt Lake City needs to join that. Thank you for your time. Next will be Aaron Lin, followed by Alessandra Reed, and then Ziad Hassan. Aaron, you may now unmute. Hi, I'm Aaron Lin. I live in District 5 in South, Lox South Salt Lake, and I'm here saying the same stuff everybody else is 
ceasefire in Gaza. It's a fucking genocide going on. Like, I don't, I have a little script and I don't even know how to follow it. You already know all the numbers. I just want to make what a are you doing? reminder of the rules of decorum, uh, limiting obscenities and profanity. Thank you. Sorry, my bad. I got grumpy. Ceasefire in Gaza. I don't know what to tell you. You know the numbers. Everyone's telling you the numbers. Everyone's telling you the numbers multiple times from multiple people. I don't know how you can just like not do anything. You're the voice. You're the one that's supposed to be telling the higher ups you keep going through the chain, right? Is that not how this works? I'm paying for it with my tax dollars non consensually. The city is paying for it. The workers in the city are paying for it without their consent. And you're just like, oh, that's fine. That's not fine. Nobody supports. I don't understand. So many people are dying right now. It is a genocide, completely wiped out. I, can you imagine not being able to find your family? Daily airstrikes? Like, I don't, I don't know how to make it clear. And I don't know why I would be the one that makes it clear when everyone else has been way more coherent about this than me. I don't. Call for a ceasefire, call for a ceasefire, call for a ceasefire, immediate ceasefire, unconditional release of Palestinian prisoners, humanitarian aid. I don't know what else to say. Call for a ceasefire. Allow humanitarian aid to get to the people of Gaza. Call for a ceasefire. Allow humanitarian aid to get to Gaza. You are, you are part of what is helping prevent this. You are part of what's going on. Do you feel okay with that? How do you feel okay with that? Call for a ceasefire, humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza. And next will be Alessandra Reed, followed by Ziad Hassan, and then Aziz Abzuyed. Alessandra, you may now unmute. Hello, Council. My name is Alessandra or Lissa Reed, and I'm under contract on a home right now in District 5. I decided to plant roots within Salt Lake City limits because I believe very deeply in the power and the impact that this city's government can have. For every 10 people in this city, one person has been slaughtered in Gaza in the past 95 days. 23,000 people, including 10,000 children, murdered by a government, and the surviving millions are injured, intentionally starved, rendered homeless, their beautiful cities turned to rubble, their minds tortured by the unceasing presence and threat of death by absolutely no fault of their own. This is all enacted with funds from the federal tax dollars paid by your constituents without our consent. The people of Gaza are the people of Salt Lake City. We can help them as our neighbors if you can help us as our counselors. At least 61% of the U.S. wants a ceasefire, and this has nothing to do with religion. Jews, Muslims, and Christians are all calling for it. It has nothing to do with self-defense. I think it's extremely clear that murdering 20 times more than your attacker is well beyond defense. A call for a ceasefire really even has nothing to do with history. It's simply an obvious response to an ongoing genocide happening today. If this was happening here in Salt Lake City, I have no doubt that this council would use its power against the atrocity. You would have no choice because you have been empowered as the representatives of your people to act in our best interest. Well, it's not here, it's far away, but yet the genocide nevertheless continues with the support of your power behind it. Your silence on genocide is a use of your power, whether you want it to be or not. We need you to be our voice and to act in our best interest. Please join the ranks of Portland, Minneapolis, San Francisco, and other cities, and put Salt Lake City on the map as a city whose counselors take bold action against violence and in support of community and justice. Resolve to demand a ceasefire and humanitarian aid in Gaza today. Thank you. Next will be Ziad Hassan, followed by Aziz Abzuyed, and then James Makari. Ziad, you may now unmute. Uh, good evening. Uh, this is Ziad Hassan. I'm a resident of District 16. Um, I serve as an officer in the U.S. Air Force um, at Hill Air Force Base. Been doing it for five years. And yes, service members do not support this mass atrocities. 
there has been ethnic cleansing, genocide, and crimes against humanity. This is absolutely unheard of in any single war period. I am a nerd of World War II, read it every single, every single month, know everything about it. Dresden, Hamburg, you name it, Berlin. This is worse than any of those specific wars and incidents that occurred. And it's happening in front of our eyes. I can't even believe it. When I was studying World War II and now looking at what I see on the phone, it's, it's, it's madness. We request the council to sponsor a resolution demanding that the U.S. government call for immediate ceasefire in Gaza and that a copy of that resolution be sent to President Biden and the members of Utah congressional delegation, urging them to use their position influence to call for an immediate, immediate um, halt uh, to the mass atrocities and end to the violence and a immediate ceasefire in Gaza. As a lot of my colleagues said, one in every 100 person in Gaza got killed. So, so let me put this in perspective. In Utah, you have 3 million residents. What about? Imagine if one in every 100 is dead, okay? You'll see the streets filled with dead people. You're walking around in dead people. So this is absolute insanity. Have some humanity. Call for a ceasefire. It's common sense. It's a, re it's a resolution. And as, again, my colleague said, let's put Salt Lake on the map. Thank you. Next will be Aziz Abzuyed, followed by James Makari, and then Logan Gardner. Aziz, you may now unmute. So the sound that you're hearing right now is what everybody in Gaza has been hearing for the past 95 days. And it's the Israeli drones that are uh, watching Gaza, not just Israeli, Israeli and British and American drones watching Gazans and Palestinians in Gaza 24-7. And some of these drones are even uh, targeting children and civilians in the streets, in their homes, in, in their schools, in hospitals, in every single place in, around Gaza. And um, if, if none of you has already seen the, uh, the ICG application, the international Court of, uh, Court of Justice application by the uh, uh, by South Africa. Uh, please read it. Uh, you will see the genocidal intents by Israel, followed by uh, whatever action they have taken uh, to uh, to realize that intent into into the ground. Uh, and this is all done by the using of uh, places in in America, including the Salt Lake City and the Salt Lake City uh, facilities. Uh, to manufacture, design, and send uh, weapons to Israel and uh, uh, kill civilians and commit a genocide in the name of American people. Um, if you call for a ceasefire today, it is 95 days too late, and uh, and history will remember this. History will see it, and uh, I hope that one day uh, we'll be in a court of law and we will charge each one of you if you don't call for a, for a ceasefire of complicity in this crime. Thank you. Next will be James McCurry, followed by Logan Gardner, and then Jakey Ciolo. James, you may now unmute. Hi, thank you. My name is James McCurry. I'm a Utah native at 31 years old, and I live in District 23. My family has lived in Utah since the 1940s. Over 22,000 Palestinians have been killed during the attack on Gaza by Israel since October 7th. Currently, half of the Gazan population is at risk of famine, and by the end of this year, it forecasted half a million to one million people may perish due to Israel's intended negligence, according to the UN. This is not about Hamas. This is about Israel's ongoing war crime of collective punishment or genocide funded by our tax dollars. South Africa has just charged Israel with the crime of genocide in the international courts. We agree with South Africa. Utah and Salt Lake City need to stand against genocide. You are our voice. We call you to bring a resolution to the council that calls for a ceasefire and ending aid to Israel. Israel is escalating regional tensions and throwing our national security into jeopardy. To quote Anthony Blinken, this is a conflict that could easily metastasize causing even more insecurity and even more suffering, end quote. It's easy to ignore a conflict on the other side of the planet, but I urge you to reconsider your blissful ignorance. 
as this conflict very much threatens our homeland security. I ask that you please follow the recently passed resolution out of Portland, Maine, as well as the other cities that have participated and be a national leader. To quote Robin Kimmerer, transformation is not accomplished by tentative waiting at the edge, end quote. The time to act is now. Thank you, that's everything I have. Next will be Logan Gardner, followed by Jiki Ciolo, and then Olivia Marin. Logan is here in person. Hi, I'm Logan Gardner. I live in District 5. Um, <clears throat> over 22,000 Palestinians have been murdered by Israel since October 7th of last year. It's expected that half a million people in Gaza will starve within a year because of the genocidal actions of Israel. You cannot keep pretending that this is some righteous battle against a nebulously evil terrorist group. This is about Israel's ongoing war crime of collective punishment and genocide funded by our tax dollars. South Africa has officially charged, charged Israel with the crime of genocide. We agree with this charge because we haven't bought into Israel's ridiculous war propaganda. Most of us want to end all USA to Israel. Most Americans want a ceasefire. Most of us are calling for a ceasefire, so please do the bare minimum and call for a ceasefire. Even at this level of government, it's still important. Thank you. Next will be Jakey Ciolo, followed by Olivia Marin, and then Rita Donasso. Jakey's here in person. Hello, Falava. My name is Jakey Ciolo. I'm in District 4, a.k.a. Best District. Um, I'm the director of Nua Nua Collective, and we stand in strong solidarity with the 10,000-plus queer organizations demanding a ceasefire, including Burning Sissy Valley and Armed Queers, which is local. I come here today to, met to demand a ceasefire resolution, and I say demand because we are too far long from playing nice to urge any of you to call for a ceasefire. We have the most diverse council we have ever seen in this city, but representation without action means nothing to me. As a Pacific Islander, we know what occupation looks like. Look at Hawaii, American Samoa, French Polynesia, West Papua, and the list goes on and on. The same tactics used by the IOF and is not real are too similar to the attacks that killed my ancestors, killed my ancestors, stripped them of their Matai titles. Since October 7th, this council that represents all of Salt Lake City, which yes, does include Palestinians, <clears throat> 20,000 plus Palestinians have been slaughtered since then. October 8th, many of you were so quick to sh show support for Is Not Real, and I quote from your Instagram post, tonight the community gathered in solemn solidarity with Is Not Real. This is a strong signal to send to the community that this council supports genocide, that this council supports ethnic cleansing, that this council supports the 75 plus years of occupation. My res um, I know there's a lot, there are lots of reasons as to why the city might not want to make a statement or call for a ceasefire. Do you not want to piss off the governor? Do we not want to piss off the legislators? Or do you not want to piss off your constituents? I demand that the city does its job to denounce genocide. Look at Portland, Maine's ceasefire resolution. It's the bare, bare minimum that you could do. Um, and that's all I have to say. I call for a ceasefire and a free Palestine. Next will be Olivia Marin, followed by Rita Dosan, and then Daniel White. Olivia, you may now unmute. I'm tuning in tonight because I also demand you and your colleagues not only request, but do everything in your power to secure an immediate and permanent ceasefire to end is, re is not reals. Um, indiscriminate attacks on Gaza and bring our citizens home. I also want you to make every effort to ensure immediate and unrestricted access for humanitarian aid to Gaza. And I want you to work for similar results in the West Bank, Jerusalem, and all of historical Palestine. Tens of thousands of innocent men, women, and children have been martyred. This is not about Hamas. 65,000 tons of explosives have been dropped have been dropped on Gaza. This is the <clears throat> equivalent of three nuclear bombs. If we want to talk about the environment, we need to look at everything contributing to global warming and start holding um, those that are contributing accountable. Utah alone has sent tens, tens of millions to Is Not Real. 
we are complicit. This is a red line election issue for me, for me and uh, many of your other constituents. Not only will I vote against anyone who opposes stopping this genocide and apartheid, I will organize work and, and fundraise against them in the next election. Words are not enough. We need to see concrete action. If doing the moral and decent human thing isn't enough, do it for your own self-interest. Know that we all call on you to bring a resolution to the council that calls for a ceasefire and ending aid to is not real. Is not real is escalating regional tensions and throwing our national security into jeopardy. Follow the recently passed resolution out of Portland, Maine, San Francisco, and be a national leader on the right side of history. The people do not support your silence. And if our, our demands are not recognized, we will organize to remove you from your office. That's all I have to say, except for I second that if a, resol or if a ceasefire resolution was passed now, we are 95 days too late. Um, that's all I have. Have a good night. Next will be Rita Dosan, followed by Daniel White, and then William Buya. Rita, you may now unmute. Hi, my name is Rita Dosange, and I live in District 3. I'm a student at the University of Utah. I'm calling amongst many of my peers for a ceasefire in Palestine. If we allow and continue to fund this genocide to happen, we become the worst in humanity. If our calls for a ceasefire continue to go unheard, your children will be reading history books that should have your names in it for allowing another genocide to happen. I urge you to be better than your ancestors. Without the over $260 billion sent to Israel since 1948, Israel would arguably not have the means to ethnically cleanse Palestine. The blood is once again on the United States' hands. We understand that there is a fight for world order, but this is not the way to place a pawn for resources in the Middle East. This is a proxy war that is unethical and a disgrace to, human to, to humanity. I am horrified that money and threats can buy our representative silence. I am horrified that there is lack of empathy and moral conscience from our representatives. We do not want our taxpayer dollars going to the murders of so many humans. I am amongst many other Americans who do not want to be a part of the imperialist nation that this country was founded on. I ask that you join us on the right side of history and humanity by calling for a ceasefire. Thank you. Next will be Daniel White, followed by William Buya, and then Kale Akina. Daniel is here in person. So good. Hello, Salt Lake City Council. My name is Pippin. I am here to address the humanitarian crisis occurring in Gaza and to call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire. The United Nations defines genocide as deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part, end quote. South Africa has charged Israel with genocide in the international courts. Some of the genocidal acts committed against the Palestinian people are as follows. Collective punishment and indiscriminate attacks, killing over 22,000 Palestinians in Gaza. Mass expulsion and displacement of over 1.9 million Palestinians in Gaza. Deprivation of access to adequate food, water, shelter, clothes, hygiene, sanitation, and medical assistance for Palestinians in Gaza. It is estimated that half a million Palestinians will die by the end of the year because of Israel's actions. It is imperative that the Salt Lake City Council call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire and an end of U.S. aid to Israel. I do not support your silence on this issue and will not vote for any elected officials who do not take action to end the ongoing genocide. Permanent ceasefire now, free Palestine. Next will be William Boya, followed by Kale Akina and then Fern Robin. William's here in person. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here on behalf of the children and families that are being slaughtered in Gaza, Palestine. It's very sad uh, watching a four-year-old boy uh, as a victim of shrapnel uh, bleeding from his, um, his carotid arteries and just pretty much bleeding out and not being able to be there to help him or protect him ahead of time. Um, a lady getting shot just for crossing the street the wrong way. I wish I was there to be able to help her, protect her, to be able to save her life. Somebody getting shot and then ran over by a tank and splattered on the street. Again, I wish I was there to be able to help this person, to be able to save their life, well, not save her life, obviously, in that situation, but to help protect them ahead of time. Um, Gaza, was a city that everybody in this room, 
probably would have wanted to go there in vacation years ago, prior to what happened now. Now, this is like a frozen apocalypse. It's cold, it's rainy, it's overcast some days. The people are freezing to death over there. The food is just absolutely horrific when they are able to find food. So I come here to everybody and I, I plead with you, whatever that you can spare for the Gazans, for the kids and the families, please, whatever food, whatever funding that you can help, please, uh, if we have it in the budget, please allocate it to help them over in Gaza with the food and the medical supplies that they need. We also have officers, some that are very well trained in the city. Maybe there might be a few that might want to go over there and actually help watch, the, help watch the camps and, and protect the kids. Thank you. Next will be Kale Aquino, followed by Fern Robin, and then Josefa Martinez. Kale, you may now unmute. Contrary to popular belief, my name is Kylie Aquina, and I am a District 5 resident in community and solidarity with Nuanoa Collective, Burning Sissy Valley, and Armed Queers as well. We have yet to see any of you publicly acknowledge any personal connection to the genocide of innocent Palestinians. As we discuss sustainability, water conservation, droughts, air quality, and climate emergencies, let's also discuss how relentless Israeli bombardment has generated almost 281,000 metric tons of carbon emissions. And the longer this occupation continues, the more rapidly this climate crisis escalates. And what good is any talk of locals air escaping if your constituents watch their native lands and loved ones become eradicated? You are being called on by the people you claim to serve. If at any point you are wondering what this has to do with us in Salt Lake City, then I'm afraid you have lost all sense of your humanity. If you cannot see their suffering, how then could you ever be trusted to recognize the suffering of your own constituents? On your city council member bios, more than half of you claim that most importantly, you are here to listen. So listen to the dreams of Palestinian children for the coming year. My wish for 2024 is for a complete ceasefire. I wish I could go back to my home, even if we built a tent under the rubble. It would still be more honorable and dignified. We want a free Palestine. We don't want anything else. And from a little boy who looks no older than five, I wish the war ends and we'll go to the sea. We'll go to kindergarten and go play soccer in the playground. In the year 2024, you have every single opportunity to do better than those before you. The security of your position is contingent upon whether or not you can prove to all of us that you do as you claim and put good, put your power, your position of power to good use. The people you de you serve demand that you step up and call for an immediate ceasefire and an end to Israeli apartheid. Our demands, our protests, our disruptions will only grow in strength until you prove your humanity to your constituents and demand a free Palestine. Kul aina, we will see land back in this lifetime. Thank you. Next will be Fern Robin, followed by Josefa Martinez, and then Danny Erickson. Fern, you may now unmute. Hi, my name is Fern Robin. Um, I am here for the same reason as everybody else. I urge you all to hear the voices of the people here in Salt Lake City asking you to write a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza and access to the free flow of immediate humanitarian aid like Portland, Maine and San Francisco put forward. The current death toll in Gaza is 23,210 people, and that is not including the 7,000 people missing under the rubble, which will would bring the total to over 30,000 people. 30,000 people in 94 days. The people in Gaza are about to face what is called the triangle of death, which includes famine, drought, and epidemics. We are seeing a huge spread of sicknesses and COVID amongst these communities on top of all these displaced people being starved and their access to water being cut off. I would like to remind you all that this is something that is preventable and that you have the power to put forward a resolution to stop this inhumanity, this madness. And if a main deterrent to you not putting anything forward is fear of losing your spot on the council or fear of losing money, then you are a coward. And what, you, what are you actually doing here? You do not represent the people. The war crimes that the Israeli occupation commits on the daily continue to grow, and we are currently on track for 500,000 deaths within the year due to the intentional famine and blocks of aid by the Israeli government. 
May I remind you all that our state has put funding directly towards Israel, funding that should be used to further our communities, not to drop bombs on children and hospitals. South Africa has charged Israel with genocide. I cannot bear to see you continue to turn a blind eye to humanity. My heart has shattered a thousand times over. Please call for a ceasefire and an end to this genocide. If, if you can't do that, then what are you even doing? Thank you. Next will be Josefa Martinez, followed by Danny Erickson, and then Venus T. Josefa, you may now unmute. I am a hospice nurse. I have guided hundreds of patients and their families to the end of their lives in dignity and a sense of closure for the families. I have seen many people take their last breaths, have cleaned the deceased, and have attended many funerals. What is happening in Gaza is beyond evil. This is murder. This is collective punishment. None of these families are being given the due process, respect, dignity, or even ability to bury their loved ones. This is a genocide. Last month, you asked us to have curiosity. I am curious, curious to know why after three months of carpet bombing and 30,000 plus Palestinians murdered, do you choose to remain silent? Calling for a ceasefire doesn't change our lives or weaken the safety you are implying will happen for the citizens of Salt Lake City. Calling for a ceasefire won't change the fact as a country we have, we have the most gun violence yearly in the world. It won't change the fact that the homeless population is still dying outside on the cold streets. It won't change the fact that women's and LGBTQ rights are being infringed upon. It won't change the fact that schools are being defunded and closed down due to ongoing gentrification. It won't change the fact that housing is becoming unaffordable. It won't change the fact that every, even children in our very own state go hungry. It won't change the fact that the Great Salt Lake is diminishing with horrid air quality and cases of lung cancer increasing. We are demanding a permanent ceasefire, an end to the apartheid, an end to the funding of Israel by our tax dollars and a free state for Palestine. We are far past curiosity. We are angry. We are sad. We are emboldened with the justice and freedoms for Palestine that it so rightfully deserves. A single mother to a single mother, even child support has an end date. End this genocide, end the apartheid, and end the funding to Israel. And I'm going to play a snippet for you guys so you can hear the suffering of a child that has been amputated below the knee. No anesthesia, no pain medication, all under your watch. Shame, shame on all of you. Time. Next will be Danny Erickson, followed by Venus T, and then Weston Nichols. Danny, you may now unmute. Hi, my name is Danny, and I live in District 7. Over 23,000 Palestinians have been murdered by Israel since October 7th, 2023, and I have no idea how you can all sleep at night being silent on this. Currently, half of Gaza is at risk for actually starving, and by the end of the year, 500,000 people will perish due to Israel's actions. This has nothing to do with Hamas. This is about Israel committing literal war crimes of collective punishment funded by our tax dollars. Utah needs to take a stand against genocide. You are supposed to be our voice. You are supposed to represent us. And your silence has spoken volumes and your silence does not represent us. 59% of Republicans, 57% of independents, and 80% of Democrats want our representatives to call for a ceasefire. We are calling you to bring a resolution to the council that calls for a ceasefire and ending aid to Israel. Israel is escalating regional tensions and throwing our national security into jeopardy. Follow the recently passed resolution out of Portland, Maine, and be a national leader. Numbers have shown that more than 10 children a day lose a limb in Palestine, and that is only in three months. I watched a documentary recently from 2014 about Palestine, and in this documentary, I saw a little girl describe that her guts had fallen out due to injuries from an airstrike, and a little boy described that he wanted to die every single day, and that he tried to jump out of a window, and his sister has to stop him. I have watched fathers and mothers hold their dead children in their arms in recent months. I have watched people be blown to bits by Israeli airstrikes every single day. Is this what you want to support? Thousands of people are dying. Don't just speak on it, act on it, and show that you are against genocide. The people do not support your silence. And if our demands are not recognized, trust me when I say that we will organize to remove you from office. Thank you. Next will be Venus T, followed by Weston Nichols, and then Lila. Venus, you may now unmute. I am asking for a resolution to call to an to an immediate and permanent ceasefire. I understand that at a city level, the focus is on the local community and improving it. Please listen to your community when we tell you that our priority is putting an end to this genocide. We are on day 94 of no action being taken. 
At the end of the day, this is a community issue because our government is backing this war and our tax dollars are continuing to fund it. If we cannot be heard when we fight to make changes, we are not free people. If we cannot say stop sending our money to fund genocide and stop using our name to commit war crimes, we are not free people. If the majority of citizens want to put an end to this and we are still screaming to be heard, we are not free people. Our voices start with you. You are our closest representatives and you were elected to to elevate our voices and to fight for us. You are being paid by us, the people, to come up with solutions. And we, the people, are ready for representatives who are going to fight with us. I understand that in a corrupt system, it can be difficult to take a stand for what is right because it goes against those in a higher position of power, people with more power than you. But please help us to fight these systems of corruption. If you cannot speak for what is right without your without feeling that your position is being threatened, then you are not in a position of power and you are not free either. You are manipulated to feel that you are when you stay silent on this genocide to keep the peace and to keep the intentional facade of power or the internal facade of power, you show your willingness to bend and to be bought. It shows that you are willing to compromise what is important to save your position. Enough. Please do not cower in the face of your superiors and fight for the things that the people who elected you are directly, asked, are directly asking you to fight for. Even if it is scary, maintaining the status quo is scarier and we are not interested in your complacency. Next will be Weston Nichols, followed by Lila and then Eva QB. Weston is here in person. Hello, my name is Weston Nichols. I'm calling on you today to bring a resolution to council calling for an end to aid for Israel and an immediate permanent ceasefire. Right now, there are over 2.2 million people besieged of all necessary means of survival during winter and while bombs are dropped on their heads. No water, medicine, fuel, or food. The current death toll is over 22,000 in three months. 70% of those murdered are children, women, and elderly, with infection and disease spreading due to a lack in medical aid. This number will increase exponentially and soon. This is collective punishment, and I don't know how you can call this anything other than a genocide. I'm appalled that my tax dollars are directly funding such horrific acts, making us all complicit. While Americans die hungry and homeless, we send billions to Israel so they can have free health care and education. According to a study in 2021, Israel is at the top of the list of foreign nations receiving more than $300 billion since 1946. Why is the state of Utah and the city of Salt Lake sending our tax dollars to an occupying colonialist apartheid nation? Among the voters, 57% independent, 59% Republican, and 80% Democrats want our representatives to call for a ceasefire. As a mostly Democratic body, ignoring our overwhelming voice is not wise. You are our voice. We call you to bring a resolution to the Council that calls for a ceasefire and ending aid to Israel. Israel is escalating regional tensions and throwing our national security into jeopardy. South Africa has charged Israel with genocide, and the hearing begins in just two days with the International Court of Justice. Follow the recently passed resolution out of Portland, Maine and be a national leader. The people do not support your silence and if our demands are not recognized, we will organize to remove you from office. Thanks. Next will be Lila followed by Sophia Friesen and then Brianna Bellamy. Lila's here in person. Good evening, y'all. I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm a citizen of Deep War. I speak on my own behalf and not on behalf of any employer or any organization with which I'm affiliated. I'm also Jewish. One of the things that I find value in the Jewish life cycle is that every year we reread the Torah. We start from the beginning and go to the end. This, week's, this week, we finished Bereshit, Genesis, the beginning, and are at the beginning of Shemot, Exodus, the Book of Names. This week, we start with the death of Joseph and his brother and end with Moses and Aaron standing before the Pharaoh preparing to throw down. I want to look closely 
at the stuff that happens before Moses shows up. So most of the Parsha is dedicated to Moses. This is this part is not. Chapter 1. Chapter 1 takes us to the beginning of bondage in Egypt. We learn that the Israelites have a lot of kids. Then we learn the new Pharaoh who didn't know Joseph inherits the throne. Fearing a large portion of foreigners in the land he believes belong to him, Pharaoh tries to stop the Israelite growing, population from growing any further. So Pharaoh puts out a general directive. Kill every Jewish baby boy. This isn't, however, the first thing Pharaoh tries. The first thing he tries is enslavement. This works not at all. The Jews have even more kids. So then, wanting to keep his attempt at genocide at least a little bit on the down low, he calls the Hebrew midwives and instructs them to kill all the baby boys as they are born. They do not, and then they cover. He calls them before him, and they say, Ki lo nechamim hamitzrait ha'ivrit ki hayot. Traditionally, this is translated as because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, they are vigorous. Because they are vigorous. Ki chayot. This term sounds familiar. Anachnu nalchamim bechayot adam. We are fighting human animals. On October 9th, this was the phrase Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Galat used as he announced a complete siege of the Gaza Strip. This is the more accurate translation of chayot, savage animals. Pharaoh believes them because he is so bought into his own fantasy, his own imagined version of these strangers in the land he thinks he controls. Time. Thank you. Ceasefire. Call for a ceasefire, please. Next will be Sophia Friesen, followed by Brianna Bellamy and then Rodney Roberts. Sophia is here in person. Hi, folks. My name is Sophia Friesen. I'm a resident of District 3 and um, like the other folks here, and like the majority of Americans and the majority of Salt Lake City residents, um, I would like to call for a ceasefire in Gaza, and I would like to call for this city council uh, to bring a resolution supporting such a ceasefire. I believe that all of you are sitting there on the other side of this table because you want to do good in the world. This is your chance. You have power. It may be local power, but all power starts locally. You all have a chance to elevate the voice of your constituents who are calling on you en masse to end this genocide. I won't tell you the numbers. Everyone's told you the numbers. You know the numbers. I'm telling you that you have power and you can use it. Please, please bring a resolution to bring our voices forward and call for a ceasefire in Gaza and immediate unconditional release of prisoners. Thank you very much. Next will be Brianna Bell. Bellamy, followed by Rodney Roberts, and then Autumn Watts. Brianna, you may now unmute. My name is Brianna Bellamy, and I echo the words of all my fellow community members. I am calling in to demand an immediate ceasefire and demand an end to the genocide of Gaza. The U.S. sends over $3 billion of aid to Israel every year, along with weapons that Israel has used to bomb Palestinians. Over 22,000 Palestinians have been murdered by Israel since October 7, 2023. Over 9,000 of those are those killed are children. The majority of Americans, as my fellow community members have expressed, want a ceasefire in Palestine. Israel has broken several international laws and committed war crimes against Palestinians, including indiscriminately, indiscriminately bombing civilians and not taking precautions to spare civilians using white phosphorus, amongst several other atrocities. Collective punishment is a war crime. Half of Gazans are starving and 500,000 may perish within the year due to famine created by Israel. American officials continue to support and supply funding to Israel despite the widespread calls for a ceasefire. I urge you to listen to our demands and call for an immediate ceasefire in Palestine through a resolution and an end to the genocide. Beyond this, I urge Salt Lake City and the United States government to cut all funding to Israel and an end to the 75-year occupation of Palestine and a free Palestine from the river to the sea. Next will be Rodney Roberts, followed by Autumn Watts, and then Luna Bangeri. Rodney, you may now unmute. Hi, uh, my name is Rodney Roberts. Um, 
Over 22,000 Palestinians have been murdered by Israel since October 7th. Um, I want to make it clear that this is not a left-wing or right-wing issue. This is not about Hamas. This is a genocide as clear as it can be. This is about Israel's ongoing war crimes funded by our tax dollars. Um, we have seen massive support across the U.S. and in Salt Lake um, by people taking to the streets to raise their voices for the people of Palestine. We have shown our representatives where we stand. We have shown you where we stand. You are meant to be our voice, and I find it appalling that it's been over three months and we still need to fight for you to pass a resolution. However, we do call for you to bring a resolution to the council that calls for a ceasefire and an aid to Israel, an end to the aid in Israel. Um, Israel is escalating regional tensions and throwing our national security into jeopardy. Um, we do not support your silence. And um, yeah, we want you to call, <laughs> pass the resolution for uh, an end. Thank you. Next will be Autumn Watts followed by. Luna Bunuri and then Sahar Al Shabuaki. Adam, you may now unmute. Hello, City Council and my fellow community that are all here. My name is Autumn. I go by Faye. I live in District 39 and I am a homeowner. I was born and raised in Utah. And of course, with my voice and all the other voices that you're hearing tonight, I am demanding a permanent ceasefire, not only federally, but as a local opinion, as the Salt Lake City Council, as you are our direct voices at the very, <clears throat> the very center of where we're living. Over, I'm over 22,000 Palestinians have been murdered by the illegal colonizer settlement of Israel since October 7, 2023, and that isn't even the beginning of the abuses that have happened to Palestine um, since the Nakba in 19, uh, mid 19th century. Currently half of Gaza is at risk or actually starving. And by the end of this year, 500,000 people may perish due to the colonizer settlement of Israel's actions. This is not about Hamas, it hasn't been, it never was. This is about Israel's, the colonizer settlement of Israel's ongoing war crime of collective pun punishment funded by our tax dollars. That's not just even on a big scale. We live in a state where Northrop Grumman and <clears throat> Lockheed Martin are very much a, a core part of our constituency here and a big part of our economic value. They are sending F-35 planes, bombs, military equipment, over $3 billion in our tax money has been given just for Lockheed Martin, just for F-35s. What did you imagine? when you thought that you, as a city council member, as a person in any sort of power, what did you think that it looked like to make change? It looks like this. This is what we're begging you for. Please make positive statements for Palestine I'm ceasefire. And next will be Sahar Al-Shubaki, followed by Jenna Martin, and then Afa Icona, Sahar is here in person. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sahar. I am Palestinian. Uh, my grandparents survived the Nakba, which is something that it happened similar to what's happening in Gaza right now. And what's happening in Gaza is even worse than the catastrophe that my grandparents survived. And my parents also survived another Nakba in 1967. And here I am witnessing another genocide happening as the world watches. I have not prepared any speech because I'm so sick of it. I've, I've prepared enough speeches. I've talked to many representatives, congressmen and women, and there are yet to call for a ceasefire. And the fact that I've been listening to everyone here begging you for a ceasefire actually disgusts me. 
it makes me repulsed. And I want to look at your faces right now because I don't, I don't want to remember your faces as history is being written right now. Israel is going to appear in front of the International Court for Justice on Thursday. And this is the good side of history and this is the bad side. And by the way, there's no way that you have not watched what's going on, so that you have no excuse. You're 95 days late in calling for a ceasefire. So actually shame on you for not speaking and for not passing that resolution. I'm not sure if you're watching the footage that is coming out of Gaza, but I have an action item for you tonight. I want you to spend at least one minute, two minutes, three minutes to watch at least one single footage that comes from Gaza. And I bet you it will send shivers of horror into your, the, every single fabric of your soul. And I want you to sleep very well tonight. And if you don't pass that resolution, it means that you are okay with children being killed. And I hope that you do pass that resolution because it means that, yes, all of you condemn killing children. Thank you. you. Next will be Jenna Martin, followed by Afa Icona, and then Dahlia Salum. Jenna, you may now unmute. I'm sorry, my hands were like shaking because I'm so nervous. Okay, so. Good evening. My name is Jenna. I am a resident of Salt Lake City. Um, I am 24 years old. I am in my third year uh, at the University of Utah as a medical anthropology major. Um, I am also a licensed EMT and I worked on the front lines um, of COVID for this community that I love. I have been here since I was two years old. We came here because my dad was doing his PhD at the U. Um, like i love my community so much and that's why i'm dialing into this meeting even though i'm like so nervous okay so you ran for election to be in power in a capital city of the u.s in a globalized 2024 and like why like literally why like you knew that the people of salt lake are a gutsy bunch a loving population with intelligence empathy organizational skills like did you not expect us to say did, did you not expect us to speak when this is happening? Like, y'all, like, please, come on. Um, you can step up. And for the rest of my time, I want to address everybody else who has called into this meeting. Guys, I love you so much. And it's sometimes hard to find each other in person when we're out in the day doing our normal stuff. But like, see, hearing us all come together tonight has made me has given me this feeling of power in my community that i haven't had for a while and i love you guys and ceasefire now free palestine until it's backwards and my cat also says ceasefire now i yield my time next will be afa icona followed by dahlia salem afa you may now unmute yeah. Uh, my name is um, Afa Aikona, and I'm here with Donato Lakepa, my Hello. son. My name is Donato Lakepa, I'm the Aikona, and please stop the war and stop killing babies. I am Bella, we need to buy and, and she's fine. Uh, we live on the west side, and I just wanted to uh, share a story through um, uh, just a story. Uh, I lived in New York City, in Harlem, New York City, um, on uh, September 11th. And at that time, uh, we were called to stop the war in Iraq, in Iraq. And at that time, um, at that time, there were many Palestinian neighbors and friends that I had and we always talked about Palestine. Then there was the time we had to stop what was happening in Iran. Again, Palestine, the, there was the, the dialogue about Palestine. Palestine has always been there. It did not start on October 7th. And uh, just as um, the folks before, um, uh, comrades and friends and community mentioned before, 
are, we have always been, the United States has always been on the wrong side of history. So I would just like to say, you are not my voice. Please put down your phone kindly and please listen to the children in, in Palestine. We, I just received, as all of you did on your cell phone, to, um, that there is a winter storm. All the children in Palestine are in a winter storm. You're sitting there in a warm place. This, there's not a famine. It is starvation. Stop the genocide. Stop the apartheid and stop. Have some feeling, some soul. You are there to serve us, not to just sit there. Do something because we will not forget that you were silent. Do something. Free power. And next will be Dahlia Salom. Dahlia is here in person. Good evening. Thank you. I am a Palestinian community member and I I don't even know what to say anymore. I, I have my script here. I have been coming and speaking to representative after representative after representative. We are sick. I am sick. I am a community member here, like my colleagues and my relatives here. I care about this community. I moved to Salt Lake five years ago, and I'm an educator here, and I care deeply deeply about the people that I educate. I care deeply about breaking poverty cycles. I care deeply about uplifting voices of oppressed people. And I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say anymore. I mean, I, I have a comment about our flag that's blue and white that is supposed to represent peace and justice. And it feels so ridiculous to be standing here and asking you all for the simplest thing to stop killing innocent children. These are our families. These are our families that are living under violence and torture and humiliation and rape and atrocities that are unheard of. And I, I'm speaking specifically to you, Alejandro Poy, Eva Lopez Chavez, Dan Dugan, and Sarah Young. You all were recently sworn in, and you have an opportunity. Do not, do not let them, whoever they are, tell you that anti-Zionism, that calling for a free Palestine is anti-Semitic. I am Semitic. I speak Arabic. I am a Semitic person. I cannot be anti-Semitic. I have had enough my entire life. Hi. I am 37 years old. I'm sick of it. Please call for a ceasefire. That was the final registered commenter. Thank you. Taylor for moderating that. Thank you, everyone that came to speak. Uh, is there? I'd like to take a point of privilege, excuse me, personal privilege. Councilor Lopez Chavez. Thank you. My colleagues, and uh, thank you to everyone that gave comment. I'd like to take this time to recognize the Muslim community members and the allies in our city who are seeking empathy and an end to the horrific events happening both internationally and nationally. There are people hurting in our community, specifically here in Salt Lake City, and I seek to acknowledge their efforts and bring attention to these acts. Salt Lake City is home to vibrant Muslim and Jewish communities, and we need to make sure that we continue to stand with them against all forms of bigotry and xenophobia. Thank you for the time. Thank you. All right. Um, I guess we're, we'll move on in our agenda to, uh, let me regroup here. We are on section E. Section E is new business. Item E1 is an item regarding a motion for the nomination of a new council chair and vice chair. Mr. Chair, um, can I also take a point of personal privilege to yes. address something different? 
different topic. Yes, Councilman Wharton. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, I just want to take a moment to recognize a District 3 constituent, Larry Livingston, who recently passed away. Larry's one of the people in the um, background of our city who played a key role in the early years of the transformation from the commission form of government to the mayor council form of government, both as a community activist and as a city employee. And he did so as an openly gay man in the early 1980s. Uh, as a community volunteer, Larry personally took pictures of every residential structure from A Street to F Street, from South Temple to 6th Avenue. He was one of three District 3 residents who took the initiative to document the mix of apartments, condominiums, institutional uses, and historic housing structures in the avenues area and asked the city to evaluate the balance among those uses. We have a, a lot of conversations right now about density um, and I am very proud uh, of the array of housing opportunities that currently exist in District 3 condominium developments, multifamily housing opportunities, and the expansion of a major hospital and medical complex was combined by the city with the preservation of many historic housing structures in the avenues. As one of the first employees hired by the city council when it, when it was established in 1980, Larry used the, his land skills, excuse me, land use skills, which he learned as a community activist to support the city council as it defined uh, the strong legislative role that it would take in land use and urban design for the city. Larry was also involved in the refinement of urban design standards in the city. Of course, those have evolved as the city needs have changed, but some key concepts that the city still follows today, like the encouragement of mass transit, have their roots in those early conversations that Larry started. And I just wanted to acknowledge his involvement in the spirit of recognizing all the members of the community who take their time out of their lives to meaningfully engage with the council on policy items that they're passionate about. Thank you. Thanks, Councilor Wharton. Any other points of personal privilege? All right, so we'll move on to item E1. I'll look for a motion. Well, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair, I move that we uh, nominate Councilor Petro as chair and Council Member Wharton as vice chair of the uh, council. Second. Right, I have a motion from Councilor Dugan, a second from Councilor Pui. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. That passes unanimously. And I'm going to ceremonial, ceremonially pass the gavel <laughs> down and allow and ask Councilmember Petro to take over the meeting. Does that mean that I have to close this thing out for us? All right. So after that, this brings us to Section G, the consent portion of our agenda. And I'll look for a motion. For approval. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Pui, a second from Council Member Wharton. Any discussion? All those? Yes, so, Council Member Dugan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. That passes unanimously. And Aye. Oh, sorry, I missed, there's an unfinished business. So sorry. We're going to U-turn back to F, which is the unfinished business section uh, regarding an ordinance for the airport board code revisions. I'll look for a motion. Madam Chair, I move that we up the ordinance the airport board code revisions. Second. I've got a motion from Council Member Dugan, a second from Wharton. Any discussion on the matter? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? It passes unanimously, and now we can stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.